I'm Dan Ben Simone. I'm an advanced heart failure cardiologist and director of the Advanced Heart Failure and Mechanical Circulatory Support Program at Moses Cone Hospital in Greensboro, North Carolina. We're centered at uh, uh, at a community hospital that has six hospitals across uh, central North Carolina, a program called Cone Health. Um, we are a group of uh, over 40 cardiologists of all different uh, types of cardiology. You know, I think we've always uh, understood that uh, sleep apnea and heart failure have a fairly tight link. Now that we're doing more and more testing, we're really realizing that we probably underestimated how much sleep apnea is in our population. Um, we're also finding in a lot of our patients, we're finding a higher prevalence of central sleep apnea uh, than we, uh, we thought we would. Uh, so there, there are two problems that overlap uh, greatly and uh, we are trying to figure out how to screen that patient, appro that patient population appropriately uh, and uh, treat patients effectively. Yeah, this has uh, been an area of controversy for some time. Um, we all know that uh, patients with sleep apnea are, uh, are at much higher risk from, for developing heart failure and dying from heart failure. Uh, unfortunately, some of the studies that, that have been done in, in this field have not borne out a, a link between uh, improved treatment of sleep apnea and improved outcomes for heart failure. There's some very good observational data, but uh, more randomized trial data is yet to come. But what we do know is that people with heart failure who have comorbidities like uncontrolled hypertension, uncontrolled atrial fibrillation also do, do worse. And in the studies, of uh, the relationship between sleep apnea and atrial fibrillation and hypertension, we see that it's very hard to get in control of AFib. It's very hard to get in control of high blood pressure until you control the sleep apnea. We really try to focus our screening on, on people who we think have the highest risk for sleep apnea and who would benefit the most f from treatment. You know, that patient population really boils down to people who have uncontrolled atrial fibrillation or persistent atrial fibrillation. Uh, people have uncontrolled hypertension. People have frequent PVCs. People who have fatigue out of proportion to what we'd expect from their degree of heart failure. And finally, for people who are, are morbidly obese and have a BMI of over 35 or higher. Yeah, you know, we went to WatchPat, um, the WatchPat One system, uh, primarily for two reasons. The, the first reason is we liked the idea of, uh, of, of having patients being able to test themselves at home. Uh, we also thought that it was, uh, we were impressed by the ability to, to detect a higher detection rate of central sleep apnea, which we thought we were seeing more of when we were using the WatchPat uh, study uh, as compared to the regular in-lab studies. Uh, but really what pushed us over the edge was COVID. We really put our patients' health first, and if just one patient were exposed to the virus out of the hundreds we've tested, uh, that would be too much. Um, so, you know, we liked uh, the ease of use. Uh, we liked the fact that patients could do it at home, but above all, we felt like, look, we're getting a great test and we're keeping our patients perfectly safe. The downstream benefits, something we didn't expect, is being able to get these patients up, in, up into the WatchPat cloud. And now when the patients come into our office, uh, where we can go uh, into the computer system and we can look at the results of their test. We can also look at their compliance with therapy. You know, with our initial experience with Itamar and the WatchPat One system, I've really been pleased. As we talked about a little earlier, um, you know, I think the convenience for the patient and the safety for the patient are really of prime importance. Um, I think also, especially in a heart failure population, the ability to, to better detect and better separate out central sleep apnea uh, from obstructive sleep apnea is also important. It, it's silly. We spend so much time adjusting our heart failure patients' medicines, but if they have sleep apnea, you know, severe sleep apnea, and we ignore that, then it, it may nullify all, all the effort we put in on the other side. So we really see it uh, as Part of, as part of optimizing our patients' quality of life um, and, and their overall health status.